Hello everyone, in this session we would look at an example of a bank reconciliation. In the prior session we explained the various components of a bank reconciliation. So what you need to do is be familiar with the bank reconciliation components, the purpose of it and how it works from the prior session. So the best way to reinforce learn something is to actually work an example. It's better to work more than one example. It's better to work multiple examples. Test yourself. And this is what, you, what we do on Farhat Lectures to help you in understanding the bank reconciliation, to get comfortable and familiar with the various elements of a bank reconciliation. In this example, this is what we will do, including journal entries. So a bank reconciliation consists of the bank reconciliation itself and the journal entry. So we'll go over a comprehensive example but the more examples you can work, the better off you can. Remember, the bank reconciliation is important in the real world. So let's get started with this example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's dive deep into the bank reconciliation. To work this bank reconciliation, we are giving a bank statement for the month of November the name of the company, Farhat Lectures, the name of the bank, the ending balance, the account number. The ending balance is 4,694. Now your cash general ledger could be showing something else, some other number other than 4,694. Which one is the correct amount? Is it your cash? Or is it your bank? Well, you don't know until you prepare a bank reconciliation because there are timing differences. And this is the, pur the whole purpose of a banking reconciliation. So let's first examine what you could see on the bank balance. You will start with your beginning balance November 1st. Then November 2nd, you made a cash deposit, 450. Your bank account increased. Then you wrote a check, number 10, for $450. Your bank balance went down. Then there was a DM $25. DM is debit memorandum or debit memo. In the banking language, when you hear debit, it's minus. They're taking money. So, so debit means taking money. Credit means they're giving you money. It's the opposite of debits and credits for accounting. Then November 12, there's an EFT, electronic fund transfer of $750. Your bank account goes up. November 15, they collected money on your behalf. CM, credit memorandum, $200. Your account balance went up. There was an NSF check. And we talked about all of those non-sufficient check of $40. They took, they, they took out $40 because one of the checks was no good. Check number 340, you reduced your balance. Check number 13, reduced your balance. Check number 15, reduced your balance. And you deposited a check on the 25th. At the end of the day, at the, uh, November 30th, another credit memorandum for interest earned. Now, this is, this is what the bank is showing you. All the withdrawals and all the deposits in your bank balance. Then they're giving you the ending balance, which is 4,694. Now, how would you prepare this bank reconciliation? Well, here's what you do. You would say, check, you would look at your, you would look at your GL general ledger cash and let's start with the checks well you would say check number 10 I see check number 10 was deducted check number 10 was deducted from my cash good so it's in my cash general ledger it's in my bank deposit well I see check number 11 I see check number 11 is missing because they go from check number 10 to check number 12 so this one is missing. Missing means what? It means you wrote this check, you send it out, but the customer or the bank did not, the customer did not deposit it. And if they did, it hasn't cleared the check yet. So check number 11, what would say now, check 11 is outstanding. Check number 11. 
check number 12 340 number 12 it's in our general ledger it cleared the bank check number 13 or check number 12 check number 13 cleared the bank and in our general ledger we have check number 14 we wrote check number 14 we don't see 14 we goes from 13 to 15 well check number 14 is outstanding and check number 15 we see it under credit general ledger check 15 so here's what's going to happen what we say is this first when we start the bank reconciliation we have the bank balance 4,694 and the book balance is 3,900 3, notice the book balance it just you would look at your general ledger for our purposes it's giving so we have the name of the company bank reconciliation November 30th also now we, we identified the two missing checks also what we did is when we look at our deposits we saw that we had a cash deposit of 450 it's recorded in the bank recorded in the general ledger another cash deposit of 602 you see he had cash deposit cash deposit 602 we debited cash and it's in the bank balance but what we did not see is a missing from the bank statement a deposit made on November 29th for $480 so we're missing this deposit deposit in transit you remember what we talked about deposit in transit we deposited the money on November 29th and it's recorded in our general ledger debit we debited our cash but it's not in the bank statement what do we call this we call this deposit in transit so let's start with the bank reconciliation first thing we do we are going to add you know this we add deposit in transit so the bank balance was 4694 then we add deposit in transit we come up with 5174 now let's work with our outstanding checks our out outstanding checks we said we have check number 11 and check number 14 were missing check number 11 for, was for 425 and check number 14 was 702 remember what we talked about here we said this one is missing it's not showing and check number 11 was missing because we have 15 but we don't have 11 and we don't have 14 so those are the two checks what do we do with outstanding checks we will deduct outstanding checks there and for the purpose of this example we're going to assume we have no errors no mistakes so good we are done with this side of the bank reconciliation which is the bank side now let's work on the book balance the book balance is 3900 and here's what we do let me show you what we're going to do i'm going to cross out any transaction that i already worked on so cash deposits all the cash deposits is done we already accounted for all the checks we accounted for so i'm going to cross going to cross out just going to show you what we're doing because we're checking everything separately so all the cash deposits and all the checks are accounted for now what we do is we are still looking at the cash gl we're looking at the debits we're looking at the credits and we're looking for transaction first on the debits let's figure out the debit we would look and we see we we received 750 dollars electronic fund transfer and at that time we looked in the debit balance and it was already there so if it's in the bank if it's in the cash balance we can take it out what we did is we looked at the at this collected note 200 dollars it's not under the cash balance and we looked at our interest earned $12 it's not in our cash balance so when we examine the T account now we're looking we're looking at the T account we did not find this $12 and we did not find this $200 what do we do we add the 200 and we add the 12 so we're gonna take 3,900 add the note collected add the interest earned at 212 dollars now now we're gonna look on the credit side of things we're gonna see we're gonna see that a monthly fee of $25 was deducted but it's not showing so this $25 not under the credit if they took it it should be if we recorded it it will be there and this non-sufficient check well the money was here we deposited the money here now we have to take it out because it's a non-sufficient check so what do we need to do with those two 
and once we finish them we accounted for everything so everything is accounted for what we do is we need to deduct the monthly fee we need to deduct the monthly fee we need to deduct the non-sufficient check $65 so if we take 3,900 plus 212 minus 65 will give us an adjusted an adjusted this is the adjusted bank balance and the adjusted book balance so this is exactly how much we have four thousand and forty seven dollars in cash after we accounted for all the differences now what do you need to know about any adjustment made on the book side any adjustment made on the book side which are four of them you need a journal entry why do you need a journal entry because you are changing the books and what do you do when you change the books you prepare an adjusting entry so let's do this so the cash balance was three thousand nine hundred then somebody paid us $200. We debited cash. We credited their notes receivable or account receivable. We added cash 200. Then the bank gave us $12 in revenue. We debit cash, credit revenue. Notice we are increasing cash. Then the bank took $25 in banking fees. Credit cash 25. Then we had to take out $40 for the non-sufficient check. Credit cash 40. Our ending cash balance is $4,000. $47 and this is the adjusted book balance and it should match the adjusted bank balance so we know we have 4047 that's the correct amount so in this session I did not make I, I, I kept it simple I did not use an error in my example maybe I will work an example where I would have a bank reconciliation where either the bank or the company made an error and fix the error so the first thing you have to do when you have an error is figure out who made the error was it the bank or we made the error on the GL first which side then find the difference the difference means what's the amount and is that amount are you going to increase the cash or reduce the cash and it's usually the opposite entry that you did originally if it's if you have to reduce it if you have to increase the cash depending on the direction of the error whether you have to add cash or deduct cash what should you do now easy go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources that's gonna help you multiple choice lectures that's gonna help you whether you are a financial accounting student a CPA candidate CMA candidate invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe